Hello, welcome to the Object Master Quick Start video. To open Object Master, go to Window, Object Master. This will open a window that you can drag to the left side of your screen and use as a docked toolbar. I'm going to collapse all of these sections just because I want to focus on just one at a time here. I'm also going to create a handful of cubes just so we have something to work with and some context to use these tools. I'll just duplicate them a bunch of times. First tool I'll show you is group. So with these all selected, I can hit group. They all jump into one group together. So you can see I can click this many times and get many groups. I can also take things out of the group with this unparent button. So this will take whatever is selected and move it to the root of the scene. Another tool I really like to use in Object Master is the ground tool. So I'm going to make a ground plane first. And what ground will allow us to do is it will allow us to drop objects onto whatever collider is below them. So I'll move these cubes just out of the way of each other because ground won't work very well if they're overlapping. And I can just select a few of them and click ground and they'll slam down onto whatever collider is below them. You don't even need to have a collider for this object. You only need a collider for the ground. So I can take this point light and ground it, and it's just going to use the position of the object um, instead of the collider. I'm going to delete all these cubes, make a couple new ones, and I'll show you the Join Nearby Neighbors feature here. So when I click on Join Nearby Neighbors, this object is going to move to whichever neighbor is closest to it. So this is very good for clumping up um, props. Okay, next up is Wrap in Game Object. So I can select an object, click on Wrap in Game Object, and very much like Group, it will put it in its own group uh, that is at the position that the object was, leaving the object inside at the zero position. I also have this aligned to camera, so a lot of the time when I can't find an object, I don't want to move my camera to it, but I want to move it to my camera. So that allows you to bring an object to your viewport point of view just by a click of a button. A round to integer feature as well. This is kind of like grid snap. Um, this round to integer, which I'll, I'll click in a minute. There we go. So I can click it on position, and now all the positions of these objects will be rounded to the nearest integer. This works for rotations. It just uses a, the nearest 45 degree, and scale, which uses the, the nearest integer as well. This is good for kind of snap aligning things uh, very, very quickly. I also have this zero position. Um, I'm sure you've typed zero, zero, zero into the, the position, rotation, or scale sections before, so that button's meant to automate that. One click, you can zero things. Okay, next up is copy and paste. So these attributes can be copied and pasted across different game objects, either locally or globally. Naming and replacing, another big time saver here. I can select several objects in my scene, uh, and I can rename or find and replace en masse. So game object names, I can search for cube, replace with box, and it's going to rename all those files for me based on that find and replace string. That only works in the hierarchy view. Unfortunately, none of this works in project yet. You can replace with game objects, so I can do a search string for a certain uh, matching game object name and then I can replace it with the prefab in the scene to replace objects very, very quickly en masse. Okay. And then finally, I have the rename master here. So this is some pretty common rename tools that you may be used to using. You can add prefixes or suffixes or just rename these objects completely. And it gives you lots of options for changing the, uh, the numbering order. So we can add frame padding. We can count up by more than just one at a time. We can start at zero or one or any number we want. And this just allows you to rename many objects at once according to a consistent formula. I'm going to get a bunch of cubes ready to work with for these next tools here. There we go. That should be plenty of cubes. Um, so I'm just going to rename them really quick just to show you again how quick this can, can be. So there it goes. Now that's some better names for them. They're all boxes with numbers. Um, and instead of randomize, let's quickly go to scatter objects. So scatter objects is great for when you have a scene full of many, many objects. This will lay them out randomly within a radius. 
Okay, now that we have those laid out randomly, I can show you the randomization thing. So we can choose which axes that this random rotation works on. It can be all of them or just a few. Um, let me reset that again. So just on Y, you can see they're kind of spinning randomly, Z and X adding more variation. Um, we can also change their scale. So the scale by default is between 0 0.5 and 2. Um, we can change that to be a bigger variation. So that just allows us to kind of mix up our props more as well. So very, very good for, for populating maybe an organic environment with rocks or, or shrubs or, or something. So that's most of the tools. Um, play with them. There, there's a lot of different ways you can combine these together and do some cool stuff. I'm just going to mess around a little bit with the rest of the video and just show you some of the things you can do here, switching back and forth between the other tools. So there you go. I've brought them all back into one point and I can re-scatter them. Have a look at the scatter shapes here as well. We have other shapes, not just circles. We've got um, box, we've got 3D shapes like spheres and cubes. Um, you can spread them around everywhere like that as well. Um, and don't forget, you can use stuff like ground after this too. So you can lay them out everywhere, put them on some uneven terrain, and then drop them all onto that terrain. Uh, we've got these turn object things that you might find useful. So this can turn many objects at once based on a certain degrees which is useful for tiny increments or, you know, just set to 90 degrees to kind of stick to a certain aesthetic or a certain uh, convention for your props. So play around with it. Leave some comments if you, uh, if you have some suggestions or if you like it, and I'd love to hear your feedback. And have a great time using Object Master.